In this video, I'm going to be taking a Gigabyte R272Z32 NVMe storage server that sounds like this and make it sound like this. By switching over to fans from Noctua, who provided them for this project. I was confident I could make this work based on my previous experience doing this with my full custom server, but there was one big difference. That one was a 4U case, meaning I was able to buy 120 millimeter fans. This is 2U, meaning the maximum fan size is only 80 millimeters and much tighter. So I was going to have to come up with some custom solutions for this, and they ended up being even cooler than I thought. Before starting this project, I wanted to make sure that this was possible. In the absolute worst case, the Epic CPU in this server will thermal throttle when it gets over temp, so I can't damage the hardware. While I was hoping to not get near that, the reality is that one of the reasons that the Noctua fans are so quiet compared to the originals is that they just move less air. This machine came with four 80 millimeter fans in the middle of the chassis made by Delta. Looking at the specs on these fans from Delta, they are rated for 3.6 cubic meters per minute of airflow, whereas the Noctuas of the same size are rated for 0.92 cubic meters per minute, or about 25%. They are, however, wildly more efficient, requiring 80 milliamps max compared to the Deltas that are rated for 5,160 milliamps max meaning the Noctuas move about 25% as much air for 1.5% as much power. Another fun fact about that, the Deltas would be using 248 watts of power, while the Noctuas would only be using four, which means that the Noctuas will contribute far less heat themselves. Now, given the large difference between the two fans, before starting this project, I did a test by throttling back the maximum speed of the original fans using the management firmware of the server. I created a custom ramp profile to simulate how a maximum of 30% performance would work. At an all-core 100% load, I was able to just keep the CPU below 90C, which, while hotter than I would prefer, works to keep it from thermal throttling. Full CPU loads aren't something that I will be doing regularly with this machine, no matter what, so I'm treating this more like an edge case rather than the norm, but I do want to be able to handle it. Now, if you know your fans, you might be thinking I missed the static pressure rating, which on the Noctuas is only 1.8% of that on the Deltas. Don't worry, I have more plans for that, but there are some other problems I need to solve first. When I first got the fans, I set out to get them installed, but I immediately had to begin solving problems. The original fans were 80 millimeters square, but 38 millimeters thick, and Noctua doesn't make fans in that size. The fans I got were 25 millimeters thick, meaning I needed to add spacers. This was also complicated by the fact that the original fans came with a proprietary connector to hot swap them. This was just a normal four pin fan header in disguise though. Before I got the fans, I followed the wire for the connector back and found a normal fan header for each fan and verified that they have the 20 kilohertz control signal. I debated modifying the cables on the new fans to work with this, but I had another plan that meant I needed to split out more headers. So I ended up just routing the cables out through the fan guards. With that plan in mind came the beginning of the bulk of the rest of the project, designing models and 3D printing. I decided to keep it simple for these and made a basic bracket that the fans could mount to that added a little bit more thickness to them so that they could slide into the original mount. This worked out well enough, and after getting some splitters and extensions, I was able to get all of the fans plugged in and working just fine. Since the original fans could draw over five amps, I was not worried even slightly about overdrawing current no matter how many fans I plugged into these headers. This was far from the end though. I knew just these would not be enough airflow to cool the whole server, and especially the CPU. The CPU heatsink is under a flimsy plastic shroud that is only there to make sure air flows directly through it. Conveniently enough, this plastic shroud is exactly the right size to fit an 80 millimeter fan inside of it. This fan does end up placed right in front of the main fan wall, but fans in series help each other with high pressure requirements, which is why I was also planning on putting a 60 millimeter fan on the other side of the heatsink for a push-pull configuration. An 80 millimeter fan doesn't fit over the motherboard, unfortunately. My original plan here was to 3D print a bracket to hold the 60 millimeter fan, but I realized that 
CPU temps get above the glass transition temperature of PLA and parts wouldn't be dimensionally stable. So I used metal core twist ties instead. This setup provided some additional direct airflow for the CPU, and I connected both of these to one of the headers that I left open, which later let me set a different profile just for the CPU. With that done, I had one more plan using 60 millimeter fans that ended up working out even better than I thought. I don't have drives to fill up the front of this server, and I don't even have all the trays, which I found only one of on eBay for 20 bucks. This server uses U.2 NVMe drives, which I was given two of when I was sent the server by Jordan. But I also had to deactivate some of the slots because I installed a 4060 GPU for video rendering that blocked one of the slots that the PCIe breakout board was plugged into. So the front bays aren't being fully utilized and can't be later anyways. So I had the thought, I bet I could put two 60 millimeter fans in the drive slot area. That would help a lot with getting air through the insanely restricted backplane that the original fans had to suck air through. So I thought if I could just push a little more air in from the front, it would help make up for the different static pressure of the Noctua fans. I took my design for the internal fans that had all the mounting holes and made it better suited to fitting in the drive base. I also made a couple of template prints to test how my dimensions would fit in the server. My goal was to use the drive bay attach points to hold the fan in place, so I wanted it to be somewhat thick. I also wanted to have a little fun with the design and made the guards protrude out in a way in a hemisphere shape. The server has rack wings on it that still poke out farther than this did. My first full print of the design wasn't perfect, but after some post-processing modifications, worked well enough to test fit and was looking good. After a couple more adjustments, I printed one for the second fan. It still wasn't perfect, but again, usable. And finally, I had enough fans to test the performance. The first run of the server with the all new Noctua fans went great. My goal was to make the server much quieter. It was already a massive success. Here's what the original fan sounded like at full power during the boot process. And here's what it sounds like with the Noctuas. You'll notice there is still a loud high pitch fan sound. This is the 40 millimeter fan inside of the dual power supplies. I opted not to replace these. For one, it's a lot harder to match the performance of the original fans in this size. And two, power supplies are unreliable enough already. I don't wanna make their jobs even harder. It's easier to dampen high pitch sounds externally anyway, and they aren't anywhere near as loud as the deltas. Here's a later test where I just put one of the deltas back in. That's one of the original fans. One. They are way louder than these power supply fans. Now, on the day that I finally got it all together, I ran out of time to do any load tests, but I was okay with that because after getting the fans in the front, I had another idea. What if instead of two fans, there were six? It turned out the thickness of the 60 millimeter fans, even with my generously thick mount, were small enough that it was still possible to install drives behind them. So in theory, it would be possible to not give up any drive base and add even more pressure to overcome the backplane. I reached out to Noctua about the idea and they were on board with the plan and sent me four more fans to round it out. So. I got to work on the final version of the mount model, which just needed a little bit more work to be done. After finishing the design, I wanted to have a little bit more fun with it and started printing them in a vibrant lime green. This also ended up being very UV reactive, but unfortunately I couldn't figure out a way of mounting UV lights inside of them. So I'll just have to put some UV lights in my server rack, I guess. It took a few days at the office just sitting around babysitting the printer while these were being made, but I got all of them done before getting the new fans in and was immediately able to start the final leg of the modifications. There was just one more problem. There aren't fan headers in the drive base. Every Noctua fan you get comes with an assortment of accessories. Included with these are an extension and a splitter. These are regular 100 mil pitch header cable. And to put the two fans in before, I depinned the plastic housing on the extension and ran the bare wire through. This left the new male end floating around in the drive bay, and I plugged the fans into that. But that header is too large to fit in between the thicker U.2 drives. However, on the sides of the server, there are these 
channels in the side of the case for some reason. These were just barely the size of the fan extension connectors, but there's still not a lot of space. And I now needed to plug in two fans into each of these sections. Just ignore the seemingly impossible middle for now. It's a whole different problem. But for the sides, I realized I could deep in the splitter instead, and then I only had to deal with two connectors instead of three. It took some massaging, but this setup totally worked for fitting everything in both sides with the drive right up against the cables, meaning no needed drive space was lost. Now, the center, on the other hand, required a completely different solution. There is just a thin piece of sheet metal separating the three eight drive sections, and there is nowhere I could fit the connectors while also having drives. I was dead set on not cutting the cables and hard wiring them because I would have to remove the fans every time I needed to access the drives and just dangling them out of the server felt like a really sloppy solution to me. Now, if you remember back, I lost the ability to use some of the drive slots because I removed the PCIe breakout card. So technically I had room to spare if I reworked the cables in the back plane to the unusable ones in the center. But when I was initially looking at the fan headers, I noticed something interesting about the backplane. It had unused connectors labeled SATA. U.2 and SATA drives have physically compatible connectors, so it would make sense to design a backplane to work with both. And wouldn't you know it, Gigabyte made multiple models of this server, and while my Z32 was NVMe, the Z31 was SATA. The difference is the expansion boards that plug in perpendicular to the backplane and pass through all of the PCIe channels. I already had to disable four of these, and coincidentally, the SATA connection carries the signals for four drives. Now on the back of the server, there are already two SATA drives with a small backplane connected to a header on the motherboard, which had an unused header sitting right next to it. So in theory, I could take one of the now unused NVMe cables and just plug the motherboard into the backplane to make the four disconnected slots SATA instead of NVMe. But absolutely nobody has tried anything like this with this hardware before, and I didn't know if leaving the PCIe daughter board plugged into the backplane would make it incompatible. But I decided to go forward with the questionable test to see if it was possible. And it worked. This meant all drive slots on the server would be usable, just that four of them were SATA instead of NVMe. And that worked to my benefit because the height of the average SATA SSD was the same thickness with the fan header cable as one of the U.2 drives, meaning I could fit everything in the middle now without needing to hardwire the fans. There was just one more thing I needed to do now. I modeled some snap-in drive rails since I'm not going to be using the trays anymore. Over another couple of days, I printed a full set of them for all drives now, so I'm ready for the future. With that last puzzle solved, it was done. All 24 drive bays in the server were usable, and I added completely new cooling in front of them. And if I say so myself, this is now the coolest looking server that I've ever seen. And I don't understand why more of them don't have front mounted fans like this. So now with all the cooling in place though, I was finally ready for some real performance tests to see the result of my efforts. A reminder, my goal was just to not thermal throttle at full load. The original fans are, of course, going to cool the server more than the Noctuous, but at the expense of 64 times as much power while being 60 decibels louder. First, just to make sure that adding the four more fans didn't ruin my efforts to quiet it, here's the after on that change. Still excellent. So let's move on to the real results. After redoing the thermal paste on the CPU, I fired it up to do some load tests using Y Cruncher. The office temperature here is kept at 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius. The idle temp of the CPU hovered around 50C with the fans at 50% load before starting the tests. Not ideal, but I haven't spent time tuning them for idle temps, so I could probably stand to bump up the maximum speed for the fans on the heatsink. Now, on to what I really wanted to know, an all-core load. Now, before starting it, I brought up these CPU clock frequencies. If it started throttling, these should drop during the test. I started up Y Cruncher, 
and watch the temps and clocks. It reached the low 90s for the temps, and that's right on the doorstep of the throttle temp, but as I left it running, it settled there, and the clocks never budged. I looked it up while running the tests, and the rated base clock of the Epic 7742 in the server is 2.25 gigahertz, and was holding steady here at 2.4 gigahertz, so it was doing just fine. I know this isn't the most rigorous test of this, but from what I could tell, this was a complete success. With this setup, the Nachos were able to tame the Epic CPU in here at an all-core load, which, as I mentioned, will rarely happen with my use case anyway. And that marks the end of this journey. I was able to cool the server using Noxua fans to make it nearly as quiet as my old server, which this will be used in tandem with. This is one step closer to making it ready to be put into service now. I've released all my design files for the fan mounts as open source, and they're available on GitHub, linked in the description below, if they seem like they might be helpful for you. As a side note, I designed them in solid Python with Basel 2, which was new to me, and very cool, but talking more about that could be a whole other video on its own. But that is it for this project. Thank you again to Noctua for providing the fans that made this possible. I will have them linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe because this is definitely not the last time this server will be featured on the channel. If you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon, and I will see you next time.